We'll do that. Amen, everybody. We're in God's house again today. It's so good to see you guys. I love you. Uh, that's the second time I told them, ladies, and the first time I told everybody else. I'll say that a few times today. Uh, <laughs> and said we're not to. We were a pink last week. Now we're under this, uh, you know, whatever this thing is. He came in with that pink shirt. Then today I have this, and I can be Great minds think alike, right? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Amen. And, uh, you know, we're into uh, the book of Nehemiah. Man, what it got? Nehemiah. Uh, I can't tell you enough about Nehemiah. He's inspired in my life. Uh, uh, he's given me a textbook on how to handle Bell's Bible over here. He won't leave us alone, Paul. We are just absolutely on fire, ready for something about this church. I think he brought some friends with him today, some little, little crustaceans. Yeah. I don't need to interrupt. You're always talking about putting over there. This is, this is Satan, and he's trying to get into my ear, and I'm oh, showing you okay. that he has no power over us. Okay. God wants me to show you that he has no power. I take and test him because I can't, okay. because the Holy Spirit lives in me. And another reason is, where other two or three gather in this name, Jesus is here also. And he trembles when I say that. I can back him up to him. I like when he talks. Ooh, you ought to hear the things he's saying. Oh, my Lord. I could never repeat it. <laughs> anyway, I want him not. I'm the guy that hates in the basement and fights with Satan. You know, I love it. This is a great job. I love it very much. You know, uh, he gets you. He gets you. We talk about David, right? We talk about David, how, how David was a great, mighty warrior, king, Exalted above everybody. Uh, you got Jesus and then you had David. You know, I mean, that's kind of like the hierarchy of it. David saw Bathsheba one day. Beautiful, beautiful wife of one of his generals, Uriah. And that was it. That was it. He jumped in. He had to have her. Then he tried to cover the sins. And he killed a man loyal to him that would go into battle and die for him that he actually murdered that would go into battle and die for him. And that's what he does. He's a testimony weekend. And I'm gonna, I'll be honest with you, I looked at this Wednesday night and it was jumping off the page at the fall. I had a word, it was like God was talking to me and something happened between then and last night I wanted to go over it. And it was like reading Russian or French or Chinese or whatever. I don't speak any of those languages. And I finally realized last night, I got up early and read this again today. I finally realized uh, early in the morning, actually, that I had sinned. And it was a sin that I probably wouldn't have considered a sin a year ago, five years ago. And I only kept to God and asked for forgiveness. And uh, there's a penance I need, I need to pay for that sin. And I woke up this morning, and it was like uh, the Holy Spirit was just talking right you know, He was reading this to me, and he jumped back on the page. So I hope I do God honor today. I hope what I do today pleases God. I hope that what we all do today pleases God. And a lot of what we're going to talk about, Paul talked about last week, about responsibility. This is the generation of blame. Got to blame everybody for all our problems. Right here, baby. It starts right here. Any problems in my life start right here. Amen. Any problems in this church, anything in this church starts right here. Right here. That's why the pews aren't filled because of me. It starts right here. And I take responsibility and I ask for forgiveness and I want to repent for that. That means that we want to go to God and say, I want to follow you, Jesus. Teach me what I need to do, not to sin. No more. You know, to imitate him. That's what we're trying to do, right? We want to see the world the way Jesus sees the world. And when you see the world like this, man, it, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I got that right here. You hear me say this all the time. The fun is what? He gives us a abundant life. He has come to give us life and life more abundant. All of us, whether you believe it or you don't believe it, whether you believe in Satan or you don't believe in Satan, he's here. 
And if you don't believe it, turn on the television set for God's sakes in the name of Jesus. Do you think that that's our natural? We're doing that? I know we're sin nature, but we're not killing each other. Uh, right, Paul? I, don't, I mean, yeah, he controls the prince of the air. I said it. He loved, I don't like calling him that, but that's his name's in this book. I don't like calling him the prince of nothing except liars, deceitfulness. That's what he is. If he got David, he can get me. He got me the other day, but I recognize. And I'm glad I did it. I need to repent for that sin. And I need not to commit it again. I'm telling you, it was something that I never even considered this before. That I did it today. It was a sin. So there's no small sins here. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about. I know we don't like to talk about sin, right, Paul? We don't, don't get up there and start hammering me over the head with sin because I know sin, baby. That's why he's talking. He's telling me every day. That I stand up here. Don't you remember, Frank? Don't you remember what you did? And what? Guess who doesn't remember? Jesus Christ. God who has taken our sins as far as he sees west, west. And I'm not going that backwards. But anyway, <laughs> get the idea. It's today. We live in the present. And we're going to sin again. We're going to read about that too. This, that's one thing we're good at. Right? We are good at sin, but he is good to forgive. He is a merciful God. We're in the Old Testament, and I always thought he was the God of blasphemy of wrath. You know, the floods, the fires, the turning pillars of stone, the Sodom and Gomorrah, and everything. No. What I read here in his word, the living word of God, he's a lot like the sun. Very much like the sun. They are one, and there is the Holy Spirit that lives in us, and I let Paul get in all that. I don't understand it anyway. Uh, Paul, could you read this for me, please? Revelation 1 8. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. If you notice, God and Jesus talk in absolutes, right? We're taught not to talk in absolutes. We're not. We're taught never to say never, although I just said it. We're taught to say never say always. But you know when God's speaking, because he's the only one that can talk in absolutes. And God says, I am the beginning and I am the end. And we say either you are or you are not. He says, I am the great I am, or I am the great I am not. There's no in-betweens. Jesus says, you're either with me, or you are not with me. There's no room for debate. There's no room for blame. There's no room for nothing. Absolute. When you hear, it, when you hear an absolute, the only one that can say that is God, period. And we either believe he is or he isn't. Paul just read, I'm the beginning, I'm the end, I'm the Almighty. I ask what was, what is, and what will be. Amen, amen. That's what we do. Nehemiah, I have one more thing. We're going to probably take a couple weeks on this lesson because we, it is the longest recorded prayer, but it's very important. Uh, I could skip over a lot of this. I don't want to, and I want to read a lot of this today because I need to read a lot of this. And this isn't just about, uh, you know, crazy Hebrews from 25, 35, and 45. But crazy Hebrews, that would be the name of a good band, right? Mm -hmm. The crazy Hebrews. Maybe if we can do that, I want to be the crazy Hebrews. <laughs> uh, but Nehemiah, I had one thing that I've been trying to say about Nehemiah. Uh, you know, what can I not say about Nehemiah that I haven't said? But this is, and, and I take liberties like this. I kind of look at the world like this. Uh, Nehemiah was the man for the job. He, was, he never even seen Jerusalem. I didn't even realize that, really. He never even seen Jerusalem. They told him the story about the wall being down and his people being scattered. And he cried and it hurt him to the point where God lifted him up to come and raise the people out of rubble, actually. 
This is what he did, and he was a guy just like us. A person just like us. He wasn't a priest, he wasn't a prophet, he was a cut bearer of King Artaxerxes, and that's my point, my last point on Nehemiah today. And uh, we've said many times, the king loved him. The king, King Artaxerxes, the Persian king, who was the, the Persians were probably the most powerful, uh, mighty country in the world at the time, right? At the time. <coughs> And this king loved Nehemiah because he gave him the blessing to go to the home of his ancestors, rebuild this wall. Uh, he gave him uh, access to the keeper of the forest so he could get the materials to rebuild this wall. And then Nehemiah rallied everyone to do it. And there's two stories I want to say about the wall before we get into our, our thing. And we're talking about Israel here. Uh, the first thing is, that wall was broken down for 160 years, I read. <clears throat> that was from the Babylonians before Nehemiah came back. Ezra came back and rebuilt the temple. Uh, <clears throat> I can see somebody going out and trying to fix this wall by themselves. I can see this. Before Nehemiah even come, came. I can see somebody on day after day after work in the vineyards or uh, blacksmith, whatever they were. Them, their family, maybe one or two people going to a gap and picking up a stone, and I can see them being made fun of. Look at this wall, what do they think they're doing? And this guy or this woman or this family, they did it over and over and over again. That's faith. That's faith. That's foresight. And when Nehemiah came to town, he saw that guy doing that by himself. I'm sorry, guys. He saw that guy doing that by himself. And Nehemiah made him his right hand man. And we talked last week about the first Jumbo Tron. He's up on that platform now. He has been elevated. His faith is even more. And Nehemiah himself, King Artaxerxes loved Nehemiah. We've said that a hundred times. Uh, he loved him. So when he comes back to build this wall, this is how it could have went. And we wouldn't even be talking about it. And I don't even know if there would be a gospel. I don't know. I don't know. But this is what could have happened. Very easily. This is probably what I would have did. And maybe you. This is why I was the man for the job. When Sam Ballard and uh, Tobias and all these people were threatening them, were wanting to kill Nehemiah, what could he have done, easily done? He could have stopped working on the wall, sent word to King Mark of Xerxes. The first, first mistake is they're not working on They would have went. The king could have sent a division of Persian regulars up there and they'd have slaughtered the Sumerian army just like that, just like I used the Wizard of Oz a lot because I think everyone's seen it. And I always found it funny that the Munchkins had an army. Did you see that? I'm like, who didn't have the Munchkins? And that's what they would have been to the Persian regulars 2,500 years ago. They would have been destroyed and they could have guarded them. And they could have built that wall. They would have never built it in 52 days. I don't believe that would have happened. But that wall would have went up. That would have went up as slaves. They would have built it as slaves. They're slaves now. And this wall would have been King Artaxerxes' wall. Right? The wall would have went up. Nehemiah didn't exhibit that. So a lot of times it's what we don't do that makes us great for God doing his will. And I know for a fact I stand here as the Lord is my witness, as Jesus Christ is standing here, I would have been that. I believe I would have been that. So let's get into our lesson today. Abundant life, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, give me all of them and give it to me in abundance. I need to work on a lot of them. That is the fruit of the Spirit. That is the best of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're looking at it right there. And that's what he wants to give us. And when we got that, we've got everything. Amen? Amen.
So we're going to go on to chapter 9. Uh, I think we've covered all the preliminaries. I've got a couple of announcements. Uh, here's our 52 days. You know, this church was, was established in 1952. Coincidence? Coincidence? You think so? No, no. This wall was eight foot wide stone. This wall was about 40 feet high. This wall was two and a half miles around. They did it by hand 2,450 years ago. And 52 days, and I say 45, I'm afraid to say it because they didn't work on the Sabbath. And there was probably seven Sabbaths in there. They couldn't build this wall in five years. I've said that many times. I said it again. They couldn't build this wall in five years. I guarantee you. They couldn't. Build. That's with modern equipment. So you don't tell me that God doesn't exist and miracles and wonders don't happen because this is a miracle and wonder. That's why we're talking about it today. Don't forget to pray for Paul, our shepherd. We do it about 815. I said a reminder on the lecture. And I pray for Paul and others at 815 or thereabout. Every day, are you feeling that, Paul? Do you feel yeah. that? I hope you do, bro, because it's important. It's important because he wants to attack me at all angles. And if he can get a hold of Paul, we're all in trouble. We're all in trouble. We got one leader here, and the rest, even little gentlemen, we're all right here. Right? That's our ship. What he says goes. Period. I've been trying to get fired. What do you want? I don't know what I got to do. I'm down here like I'm not talking to the devil. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, tell them you guys you're bulletproof. I almost wore my bulletproof shirt today. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, Lisa, I'm gonna be honest with you. Lisa wouldn't let me wear. <laughs> That's why I didn't wear. That's why I didn't wear. Uh, and some friends got me a shirt that said bulletproof on it. I stand on the bulletproof verses. You know, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Uh, as Jesus sits next to God, God tells him, I'll sit here until I make a footstool of your enemies. Uh, the, uh, in Matthew, on the sermon of Beatitudes, he tells us when we're reviled and we're hated and we're made fun of, we're blessed, you know. And up there where he's making that house for us and preparing a room for us, I think it's getting bigger. I don't know what it is, but we're blessed. And I feel blessed today. And I feel bulletproof today. Come on. Do you feel bulletproof mm -hmm. today? I need Pentecost for today. I don't want to get into that. We have testimonies that, is, that are real important. Uh, we need to get them in here. We need to, uh, they can be anonymous. They can be a praise. Thank you, God. Thank you for my life. Thank you. That's a testimony. These are not our testimonies. These are God's testimonies. These are witness of our faith. You know, so we can go to our website, FSBC Reading, first of all, about the church reading.com. There's a little spot you can fill in, right? You can subscribe or whatever, and, and we can blast out what's going on here. And I think there's a lot of stuff going to go on here. Or you can go to uh, our Gmail, FSBC Reading, gmail.com, first of all, about the church ready. The new first of all about the church ready. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let's see here. Is there something else? Wrong? I love you. Did I say that today? Did I say that? That's the third time I told them and the second time I told everybody. We love you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. God bless you, Tina. After you being here, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I missed you last week. I really missed you last week. So we're in uh, chapter 9 of the book of Nehemiah as we march through it. And I was a little depressed after the wall was done. I think that, you know, all the excitement and the glitter was over, you know? All this stuff. No, no, not at all. We're building the people up. The people are yearning for God's word. If you remember uh, last week we talked about they wept. A lot of them first heard God's word. They opened up the first six, six books of the Bible, which was the Hebrew law of the day. Uh, described by Moses and, and others. Uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I hope I 
I hope I didn't fail Sally School in Sparkdale. She taught me that 50 years ago. Uh, I, I remember. <laughs> Do I? I remember all of this in here. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a test coming too after this is done. You better have a problem. <laughs> you don't want to fail. This this is one school you don't want to fail, guys. It doesn't look good on a resume if you fail Bible school. Okay? So, you know, you want to give this reference. You know? Yeah, I failed Bible school. Well, I, I would take this story, but I'm not going to. Uh, how to experience renewal every day. So, they're renewed now. I mean, they, they come out and they're they're praising God, and uh, they had the festival of the tabernacle. Uh, they, uh, the Levites, the priests, told them, "Don't cry, don't cry over your sin, because they really, like I told you earlier today, I had to repent of a sin that I didn't even consider a sin, maybe a year ago or so, and it was blocking me from God's word. It really was. They were realizing the sin, and in this section." They are going to confess their sins. They're going to confess the sins of the fathers. Think about that, all fathers. They're going to confess the sins of the father also. That's getting big. That's getting really large. And that's taking a lot of responsibility, right? These were not the blame people. These Hebrews, they might have been crazy Hebrews. And they might have messed up. But they're not blaming anybody here except themselves. So we go to how to experience renewal every day. And don't we want to be renewed every day? Right. It's a hard thing to do, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. I mean, sometimes our anxieties in the world get to us. <coughs> he jumps in. And he'll try to Satan over here, Tina. That's who I keep pointing to. And he won't shut up today. I had him whimpering the other day because he knows what I'm going to say. It's going to plant seeds of salvation. And he hates that. He hates us. He hates what we're doing today. He hates Jesus Christ. And if I want him to go, I'll ask Jesus to tell him to go and he will flee. But I don't want him. Like, I want him to get angry. I don't want him to waste his time. And it's a little meaningless too. Because if he's messing with me, guess what? He's not messing with me. He's not messing with me. I can take it. I know Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah has taught me how to put on the full armor of God and fight with him. And I'm not even fighting. It's not even a because when Jesus came out of that tomb, he was done. And he knows it. But he don't want none of us to know. He knows it. And when Jesus comes back, which he is, he promises. He's gone. That's it. He's done. Oh, I guess he goes to the back. Of the well, I don't know. Where does he go? Do you think? He's done, right? He's not, he's not a problem to us anymore. Uh, he can't, we can't let him get into us anymore. So the first thing we want to do is confession. We want to confess our sins. Uh, Nehemiah 9, 1 through 38 or is our uh, uh, what is it? That's, that is the verses we're going to study. Ryan, I love you. Love you too, Ryan. All right. That's it. And I love everybody. That's the third or fourth time I said that. I'm going to say it a lot today. 38 verses in this one, man. We might be on this for two weeks the way I go on, right? Amen. <laughs> So, uh, we're going to read. I'm going to ask Samantha, my dear sister who I love. I'm ready. And I'm going to ask her to turn to Nehemiah. I'm going to have her and read Nehemiah 1. Okay. Nehemiah 1, 1 through 38. Chapter 9, verse 1. Just, Just the one. first verse. On October 31st, the people assembled again, and this time they fasted and dressed in burlap and sprinkled dust on their heads. Amen. So, the party's over. The, the party of the tabernacles, where the Levites told them the party is over, and guess what? Here they show up again. And they don't even show up. They've got sackcloth on, dirt in their hairs. They're coming in humbly, and they're ready to confess. And that's we cannot have revival without confession. We just can't do it. Jesus wants us to confess and lay our sins. He's already forgiven us. He's just waiting for us to hit the button. Be Father. Be Son. Be Holy Spirit. Bang! You're saved! And your life just got better. And you just got all the 
you're working on the fruits of the spirit that we just talked about. That minute, that, that second, that's how fast it happens, and that's how it happened to me. Was it perfect? <laughs> I wish. He's not a perfect. He's not promising any kind of perfection. But I'll tell you what, I'm more bulletproof today, even with all my trials and tribulations than I have been in my whole life. Yeah. Ever. I'm more today than I ever. I still sin. I still have to repent for my sins. He's teaching me not to sin. He's taking and pruning that stuff away. And I don't want to sin. It hurts. It weakens my testimony. It weakens my faith. It weakens my witness. And that's what I'm called to do, to be a witness for and profess the love of Jesus to everyone to drop the seeds of salvation. And I'll let the Holy Spirit take it from there. And Jesus will find you and he will save you. You come here and you read this Bible with us and you get up there and listen to Pentecost Paul and you will be in the front of that in front of that altar praying and the next week we will be baptizing you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and that's how it works. We come to James 4 10, Tina. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen. What are they doing? They got dirt on their head. They're coming. They're, the party's over and they're still dying to hear the word of God and they know now that they have to confess their sins if they're going to renew as a people. This is the last recorded history of the Hebrews before the coming of Jesus. And this kind of sets it up good, I think. This generation, as I read, was one of the most devout generations. They really, truly wanted to know God. They wanted God with them, truly. And that's what we got to do. We got to want it. We got to want it. That's all we ask. You know, I, heard, I wish I could remember uh, uh, who said it. But I said it here, I think, over Christmas, and I heard it over Christmas, and I want everyone to hear it again, because it's a beautiful analogy, and I wish I could, I, I would give this man uh, who said it uh, the honor of, uh, because he taught it to me. You have a gift, okay? There's a gift saying in here, and in that gift is forgiveness, and grace, and mercy, and that list of the fruit of the Spirit, joy, patience, self-control, long-suffering, all this stuff. And it's jammed in here. Happiness. All, anything you could think of that God made good for us is in this us. And it's wrapped up in love. The kind of love that makes you shiver when you think about it and you've ever felt it. It's a love that's unbelievable. And it's wrapped in love. right? And then you've got this ribbon of faith. Faith. So to open this present, I got my hand on that ribbon of faith. So I have to have faith. I have to have faith. We, that's what we're all about. Okay? And I open that up and my life changes and I get all this stuff. Free of charge! Our Lord Jesus Christ paid the price. That I can open that. And I believe that today. I believe that years ago and today. I think I believe it even more. Thank you. Praise God that I believe it, that I'm a somebody, that he has a mission for me, he has a mission for this church, he has a mission for you. He has plans for us, and his will will be done, with or without me. I wrote a letter to Paul a long, long time ago. I think he still got it. He mentioned it one day in Bible class right over here. Yeah. And in that letter, I know I said I love you, brother, because there's nothing changed there. I love him. And I said, we have work to do, didn't I? And uh, I can't remember the letter too much, but uh, here we are, brother. Here we are. We're going to do it. And I apologize. I, I got a late start. You were the guy. He was the guy that kept going out there to that wall and putting that stone up by himself. But now, he's on the jungle tribe with all the elders and all the priests and Ezra and Nehemiah. That's where you sit today, Paul. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. All right. So we need to humble ourselves, right, Tina? That's what you read. We need to humble ourselves. When we humble ourselves, we'll get into a word from God. 
I believe it's in God. I'm coming to you in all humility. And he doesn't like false humility. Uh, Jesus tells us about that. The Sadducees out in the street doing the prayers and their fast. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus hated stuff like that. Well, I don't think he hated that. It's not the word, the word I should have used. But, you know, same thing with Nehemiah. Jesus never talked bad about anybody except his own religious people, the establishment. Nehemiah, he, Sam Bile threatened to kill him from day one. He never said, I hate you, Sam Bile. I want to go get the king of the place. Do you know who you're messing with? I'll go get these Persian regulars and wipe them off the planet. That he could have probably took Samaria if he wanted to. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So, confession is important, and we have to come to them humbly. We can't say, like the blame generation, you know, I'm sorry, God, but if Johnny didn't do that, I would have said it anyway. He's laughing. He is literally laughing his blood off. Satan is laughing over here when I said that. Because he's saying that's done all the time. God, I'm sorry. But believe it or not, I wouldn't have did that sin if my father wasn't like this. And happy Father's Day to everybody. And happy Heavenly Father, uh, Father Day to my father. It's been up and on a long time. And happy Father's Day to the Father. Yeah. Uh, you know. But uh, we have to come. We have to come humbly. We can't blame. Do not come to him and say a prayer like that. Don't do it. Just don't waste your time. Because then he's going to jump right in his back. He's still laughing. God, I'm sorry. But if uh, Landon didn't do that, I wouldn't have said today. But a lot of people say that, right? Amen. A lot of people say that. Uh, so let's go to Isaiah 66 2. And uh, Landon, yourself, do you think you could find that? Isaiah 66 2. You know, Landon, I look around her and I, I see greatness in all of us. Ryan and Landon are probably two of the greatest witnesses just for the reason. Landon, Landon, sit here, let me see here. Let me know where we're here. Five, right in the middle. Honor thy father and mother. He's honor his father and mother. He says, I think his father and mother right there, right? And that's the one that says, you know, we're all in the land, right? There's mm -hmm. a there's an extra, little extra boost to that. Uh, young man like him, young good looking man like him, and he knows the gospel. Don't act like he don't. I've heard him talk about it. He he knows the gospel. And one day it'll be his day, and he don't think it will be. I know it will be. Mm -hmm. And his life is better because of the gospel. I know that too. And Ryan, yours is too, my brother. Go ahead, man. Give it to us. 66 2. Has not my hand made all these things, and so they come into being? declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem. He is humble and contrite in spirit. Amen. And trembles at my word. Trembles at my word. Trembles at my word. Amen. Trembles at the word of God. Do you know the demons trembled when Jesus walked by? They knew who he was, right? They knew who he was. He knew who he was. He knows who he is. He, 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 I just said it. He just went. He's already went Jesus, I just wanted to mess with him a little bit. Uh, so this is the one that I esteem. This is God telling us he esteems us, right? If we come with him in humility, contrite, repent, repentance. Uh, we come with him with repentant spirit, trembling, fear, a good healthy fear of God, you know? Amen. Uh, Nehemiah had a good, healthy fear of God. That's what motivated him to build that wall. Uh, a lot of our uh, heroes in the Bible had a great fear of God, a healthy fear of God. Not that he was going to lighten and both kill them. In some cases, he probably did. Uh, and in cases like mine, he probably should. Uh, but we're going to read how forgiving our God is. And, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. He is amazing. Amen. Um, so, uh, Psalms, this is all under confession, and this is all experience for you every day. Uh, we're going we're gonna to read this one, and we're gonna, this is going to be our last one. 
Psalms 25, 9. Uh, Paul, could you read that, please? He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them in his way. Amen. Amen. He gives a, you know, I don't know. You know it is the thing. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's James 4, 6. Don't let our free will knock us out of what our inheritance is that Jesus Christ wants to give us to him in the kingdom of heaven. Don't let that make God go away. Let's, let's make the right choice today. Amen. Let's make the right choice today. This is, this is, uh, uh, this, this chapter is long and this chapter is inspiring. Uh, we haven't even really gotten into it. But we need to come to Jesus Christ who we stand at the service of. I'll tell you real quick, I said that three times this week. Uh, the first time I allowed it to my brother. He wasn't any good with me. He had been working, he was sweaty, and I said, Charlie, you know, I stand at the service of Jesus Christ. I don't even know if he heard me or he was listening, but he said, yeah, so do I. That's what he did. And I wasn't going to follow it because I didn't feel like fighting all day. My dear brother, he's a pretty tough guy, too. And I, I don't want to fight him, that's for sure. So the second time I said it, I was talking to a nurse with insurance, and it was about a copay, a big copay. And, uh, and she was commiserating with me. And um, in the middle of it somewhere, I just said, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put it in God's hand because I stand at the service of my Lord Jesus Christ. This is the second time I said it. There was a little silence there. And guess what? So do I, she said. And she gave me a testimony. Uh, I was so excited that she did it that I should have wrote it down. I think I did tell her to go to her website. I don't know. If, if it would be uh, right for me, because I got another one, to paraphrase her testimony. So I don't know. I don't know how that works. But right. She gave me a testimony. It was very familiar. You know, I was young. I was close to God. I got away from God. Now me and my family go to God's house and worship God. It was, it was great. It was a great conversation. And we didn't care about the copay after that. Mm -hmm. Third time, I'm at Walmart. I'm at Walmart. And this guy in front of me has got a hat on, and it says God's Army, and it has that army color, you know, those colors that black and, uh, and gold. And I thought he was actually in the army, but it was some reference that he was a believer, and he was in the army, yeah, he was an older man. And I tapped him on the shoulder, and big line, of one like, you know how they are, they can lie out of here. And uh, he gave me a testimony, and I'm not proud. I said, were you in the army? And he turned around and I said, no. he says, yeah. He says, my son was in the army, but I wasn't in the army. But I said, you're in God's army. I didn't even let him finish that. He said, amen. And then he just started telling me. Uh, I said, you know, I stand at the service of my Lord Jesus Christ. Then he just started telling me. You know, I was married to my wife for 38 years. And I got sick and I came home and she said she wanted a divorce. He told me. And he said, Satan had gotten to her, that she was talking nonsense and this and that. And he went on about this testimony, and I'm saying, praise God. So we at Reading First Southern Baptist Church, we stand at the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for whatever that means, don't push us to the side. Don't overlook us. Don't minimize us. We're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's with us 24-7. Let's get to church. I love you.